Hi everybody, Fintan here from Dancing Cloud. This week we're talking about Chrome profiles and some of my top tips for getting the most out of Chrome. It can do a couple of things that maybe you didn't know, didn't know that it could do. If you'd like to learn more, stay tuned. Okay, so I'm gonna cover seven tips. Chrome profiles, grouping your tabs, sending a tab to your phone, which is a really handy feature, controlling your music, opening the same set of uh, tabs in, in Google Chrome when you open it or uh, the previous ones that you've been using, um, updating your autofill, and then a couple of shortcuts that are quite handy or keyboard shortcuts that are quite handy. So uh, if, if you already know about all of those, then there's no need to watch the video, but if you want to learn about any of those, then stay tuned. So the first one that I wanna talk about is Chrome profiles. <clears throat> And I use these uh, quite a lot because I have a lot of different Google accounts. And what it allows you to do is to separate out the Gmail or Google profiles that you have so that it's not possible for them to be mixed. Now, this is really valuable if you've got a Gmail account and you've got a, uh, uh, in your business, your, your company is using Google for its email system. And you don't necessarily want to sign in on the same Chrome profile. And it's one of the first things that we teach people um, in our training is to set up a separate Chrome profile. So here I have my Chrome profile um, for Finton at damsandcloud.com, but you can see that I have quite a few other ones here. I've got my Dams and training one that I use for uh, things like this. And when I log into this one, you can see I've got a completely different image and it's a different email address. And it's not possible for me to actually bring a tab into this particular profile. So if I was to take this uh, profile here, I'd normally be able to, to drop it in uh, or this tab, I'd be able to drop it into that window. It's not actually possible to do that because it's a totally separate profile. So I would definitely recommend that you do that. And how you set up one of these profiles is very, very simple. You just click on the little profile icon, which is here, scroll down to the end and click add, and you simply sign into your account. And I will ask you if you want to link this computer and your account and then all of your shortcuts will be synced across your devices. So that means if you were to sign into Chrome on a different device, uh, a, a different laptop more likely or, or desktop PC, you would have all of the same shortcuts, all of the same setup and things like that so that you don't have to um, go and remember what they were. So uh, very, very useful that that is synced across all of your devices. So that's Chrome profiles. And as I said, definitely something that I would recommend setting up. The next one is grouping tabs. So at the moment here, I've only got two tabs open, but let's say uh, I'm also gonna open up my contacts and I'm also gonna open up my calendar um, and let's say Google Meet as well. So there, let's just say, for example, this is my, my work um, setup and these are my primary profiles that I'm using. I can group these tabs together. So if I right click on them, I can uh, get a couple of different options. I can pin them, which actually is something else that you can do. So you can right click and pin a tab. It's a little bonus tip. Um, so I'm gonna pin that Gmail one and that just makes it smaller so it doesn't take up any space. But if you've got a set of tabs that are um, maybe, you know, something that you use all the time. So I'm gonna call this one uh, work and I'm gonna give it a little color because we're a so I'm gonna give it a little purple. Uh, now these are group tabs and when I pull tabs in here, it groups them together. So you can see these guys all have a little purple um, on them and if I want, I could also uh, pin this guy. So now I have a little pinned group tab. And um, this, this can be quite useful because you can see I can um, open it up and shrink it down. So you could have a whole group of five or 10 or, or, or whatever number of tabs that you want and it groups them all together. So I find this useful if I'm researching something, maybe a video or for my work, um, my work tabs. I tend to pin my work tabs because that's what I prefer and you can use them in combination and it makes it much easier, again, if you've got a huge amount of tabs open, which generally I do. Um, the next one is sending a tab to your phone. So if we take this uh, tab here and I just open up a new one and I look up a website, say the GAT General Audit Tool for Google. I don't have to spell it correctly because Google's gonna find it for me anyway. Good old Google Autocorrect. Not sure what we did before that. Okay, so this is the GATLAB's uh, website. Let's say I want to send that to my phone. What I can do is I can right click on it. Um, and if I'm signed into that account, 
And in this example, I have messed it up because I am signed into my phone on a different account. So that's actually showing the separation of Chrome profiles as well because I wasn't able to do it on this one. But if I right click on this one, you can see I can send it to Finton's phone, um, iPhone. And that's because I'm signed into it on, um, on this device. So I'm signed into my uh, Finton at Dams and Cloud now, and it's syncing on here. I'm not signed into that test account. So if I send this to my iPhone here, it will say sending. And now a notification has appeared. OK, so now I can tap this and open it. I can't see what's happening. Open, and I can open up that same website that I had on my desktop. Well, you're going to. Nah, it's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can open it on my phone. So um, this gives you the ability to very quickly uh, send a tab on Google Chrome to your smartphone, which is useful, again, if you've, if you've maybe researched something on here and then you're heading out, you want to take that with you. All you have to do once you have it set up is right click and click Send to Phone. Now, you do have to be signed in to your Chrome profile on here and signed in to your Chrome profile on your phone as well. As you saw with my other account, that didn't work. OK, so the next one is controlling music or any sort of media. So if I go to... Uh, if I go to Dams and Clouds YouTube and I play a little video, so I'm going to go into this particular one <laughs> and let this uh, play. Good old Squarespace. And so I'm actually able to control it here. And because it's YouTube, I can do a couple of different uh, or, or additional things. So I can actually bring in uh, picture in picture here and I can hit play on the video if I want. And then it will start to, to play on here. He says optimistically. It is playing, but it's silent. Interesting uh, features that are. I'm going to turn them down because it's playing in picture in picture. Okay, so I can see it playing on here, um, and that means that I could browse around while this is still playing. But it, it allows you basically to control any sort of media that's playing in your tabs. Obviously, I've only got two or three open here, but you can imagine if you had five or 10 or 20 or 30 tabs open, sometimes trying to find where your media is could be difficult. Um, and sometimes people will have subscription services for Spotify or, or something like that, where they have the music playing in one of the tabs. And instead of having to go to it, you're actually able to control it from here, which is useful. I love the picture in picture for YouTube as well. That's also a really handy feature. Now, the next one I want to talk about is is opening up the same set of tabs um, all of the time. So if I go to my test account here and I jump into my settings, um, if I want, I can actually decide what is going to happen on startup. Now, I always have it say, continue where I left off. And that's what a lot of people have. But you can actually say, open a specific set of pages. So I could say, these are the current pages that I want to open, my email, my Google Meet, my Drive, and my contacts and my calendar, and then also the GAT website. I want those to open every single time um, I open my Chrome profile. So now, if I shut this down and I jump back into that uh, training account, the Finton Dams and Training one, it's going to open that same set of tabs. I didn't have to go find them, it's just loading them up straight away. It's also got my pinned ones um, already done for me. So that's a really, really useful feature, particularly again for businesses. If you want people to be able to jump into their mail and their calendar and their, and their um, contacts and stuff and to have all of those um, set up when they open um, their computer. The next one is autofill. So autofill, you might be familiar with this. It's basically when you go to a particular website, uh, it will suggest to autofill your address, maybe um, your name, your email address. And sometimes you might want to change this information. Just um, click on the three dots, drop into your settings, and it's up on the top left-hand corner. Um, and you can, generally it's addresses, but it could also be some other stuff. So I could actually fill my own information in here. So I could fill in Finton, Murphy, organizational name, and I could put in my air code, my email address. I could put in Finton at Dams, and this is my Dams and Training account training.com. And then if I save this information, the next time I go to a, a website and it requests that type of information, uh, Google Chrome is going to automatically know and it's going to fill it in for me. So it's great if you want to edit it as well. I find a lot of people end up putting this information in. Maybe they're filling out a form for someone else and then it starts predicting that email address that's happened to me before and you want to get rid of it. This is where we, you would go to, 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 uh, to be able to do that. Okay, so the next section is shortcuts and this is my final one. Um, and I have a little 
shortcut for myself here with all of the shortcuts on it. Um, so I'm gonna bring that up. So the first one is how to quickly open a tab in incognito. Uh, now this will be slightly different on Windows, um, but it's gonna be pretty similar in terms of a, a combination of, of buttons. It's probably gonna be control or command uh, instead of the Apple button. So on, in, in, on my Apple Mac here, it's Apple and Shift and N will open up a new tab in incognito. Uh, if you want to be able to do that. The next one that I find quite useful is to be able to jump between the tabs. So this one is um, the Apple button and options, and then you can use the right and left arrows. And this again is really, really useful if you've got a lot of tabs open and you wanna be able to jump through them quickly. <clears throat> I love that one. And then the next one I wanna show you is snapping to the search bar. So uh, again, the Apple button and L, and that will jump straight up to the search bar so you can just start typing whatever you want and get searching. And then the final one is recovering a tab. This is a really handy one. I can still remember when my colleague Raheem showed me this um, and it was, it was groundbreaking to me at the time. So if you end up closing a tab and you're like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. If you just hold down Apple and Shift and T, it will open up the last tab that you closed. It's also really useful if you accidentally close an entire window. So these three tabs, it will actually, I noticed, do the same thing. It will actually open up um, the, the full set of, of windows that were open. Um, so that's all of them. We, we covered seven. We went through Chrome profiles, group tabs, sending your um, tab to a phone, and music or media control, opening the same set of windows or, or the same set of tabs for yourself updating autofill and shortcuts. Hopefully you guys found this video useful. If there are any Chrome tips um, or hints that you guys have for us, please let us know what they are in the comments below. Obviously this isn't an exhaustive list, but they're just some of our favorites. And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please uh, check out YouTube and LinkedIn. They tend to be our most popular ones, but we are also on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this week's update. I'll chat to you guys.